This presentation is about vectors. But before we talk about vectors, I need to remind you about what a scalar is. A scalar is a physical parameter characterized by only its magnitude. So we would speak about the mass of a loaf of bread as being one kilogram. One kilogram, a number, and a unit would be the scalar. There is no sense of direction. Vectors, on the other hand, are characterized by both a magnitude and a direction. So for a velocity, for example, we would talk about 60 miles per hour north. 60 miles per hour would be the magnitude of the vector, and north would be its direction. Vectors are generally shown in textbooks as bold face type, upper or lowercase letters in bold face type. When I'm doing things on the whiteboard, I'll try and remember to put little arrows over them because you won't be able to see bold when I do on the work on the whiteboard. Occasionally, you'll see this arrowhead notation also in textbooks. The magnitude of a vector is shown either in a non-bolded letter form or as an absolute valuable. So a non-bolded A or an A within an absolute value sign would indicate to us the magnitude of a vector. Vectors have a number of properties. The first of these is that addition is commutative. That is, A plus B will give us the same result as B plus A. In addition, if we have three or more vectors, we can group them and add them together in any way that we like. So if we have A plus B plus C, we can group them, and if some examples are shown here, we can do A plus B, get a result, add that to C. We can add B plus C together, add that result to A. Or we can add A and C together and add that result to B. And all of these will produce the same result, so the grouping is not significant. Subtraction will be treated as addition of a negative vector. So when we see A minus B, what we're going to do is take the vector A and add to it the negative of vector B. So what is the negative of vector B? Well, here we have a vector B, and the negative of vector B will have the same magnitude, but will be in exactly the opposite direction. Finally, a vector can be moved and is the same vector as long as it remains parallel to itself and has the same length. So what this says is, as long as we specify the magnitude of a vector and its direction, we've completely specified the vector. It doesn't really matter where it is on the xy plane, as long as it has the magnitude and the direction, it is the same vector. We've talked about the idea of adding vectors. On this graphic, I'm going to show the first of two techniques for adding vectors together. This example shows three vectors, A, B, and C, but the technique is completely general for any number of vectors. So here we have three, A, B, and C. We want to add them together, a new vector, D. The first thing we do is we move vector B so that its tail is exactly on the point or the tip of vector A. Then we move vector C so that its tail is exactly on the tip of vector B. This leaves the tip of vector C sort of out there in space. And now we go back to the origin, that is the tail of vector A. So we draw a new vector from the tail of A to the tip of C. And this is our new vector D, the sum of A and B and C. So now I have a question for you. Using the tip-to-tail technique, see if you can tell whether or not subtraction is commutative. So we have two vectors, A and B, that are shown on the chart. So try A minus B and see what you get using the tip-to-tail scheme. And then do B minus A and see if you get the same result. You can pause the presentation and do this on a piece of scrap paper and then come back and resume. I think you found that subtraction is not commutative. We can multiply a vector by a scalar. 
That process will give us a new vector. The length of that new vector will be the scalar times the length of the original vector, and the direction is going to be the same as the direction of the original vector. As an example of this, I've shown Newton's second law. We'll talk about this in a lot more detail later on in the course, but for today, we can read this equation as force equals mass times acceleration. So force and acceleration are vectors. Mass is a scalar. And what this equation tells us is that the force is in the same direction as the acceleration, and the magnitude of the force is the mass times the magnitude of the acceleration. Let's find the components of a vector. The components of a vector are nothing more than the projections of the vector onto the x and the y axes. We often call finding a vector's components resolving the vector or the resolution of a vector. Here we have a vector r and it's shown on the xy plane. It has a length as shown on the chart and it's oriented at an angle theta with respect to the x-axis. The dotted lines show the projections of the vector down to the x and over to the y-axis. Now the question is, what is the length of the x component or the length of the x projection? Well, these are right triangles in the figure, so we can find out what the adjacent side to the angle theta is. And that r sub x is the x projection, and it's the hypotenuse of the triangle times the cosine of the angle. Likewise, the y projection, or the y component, is going to be the hypotenuse times the sine of angle theta. Unit vectors are vectors that have magnitude 1, and their direction is along one of the principal axes, that is x or y or z. Unit vectors don't have any units. Unit vectors are only there to show us direction. i, j, and k are the unit vectors usually associated with the x, y, and z coordinate axes. When I'm speaking about these, I will often use the word hat. For example, i hat or j hat. And that little word hat will indicate that what we're talking about is a unit vector. So now, now let's go to a second technique to add vectors together, and we're going to do this by components. So we have two vectors, A and B, and the vector A has an X component times I hat, and a Y component times J hat, and a Z component times K hat. So there's the vector A, and the vector B looks very much like it in form. The vector C is going to be A plus B, and how do we do this with components? Very, very simple. We take the x components and add them together, the y components and the z components. And the resulting vector will be the sum of the x components times i hat, the sum of the y components times j hat, plus the sum of the z components times k hat. And that will give us the new vector c. There will be two multiplicative techniques that we'll talk about with respect to vectors. The first of these is called the vector, I'm sorry, the, the scalar or the dot product. So we say this as a dot b. Note on the left-hand side of this equation, a dot b is the scalar product of two vectors. But on the right-hand side of the equation, there is no bold-faced type. We have the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So the right-hand side of this equation is a scalar. And in fact, the dot product produces a scalar as the result. If we skip down to the fourth bullet on this graphic, we can do A dot B in components again. And again, it's a very simple formula. We multiply the X components add them to the product of the y components, add that to the product of the z components, and that is a dot b. ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. Now from this form, it's very easy to see that a dot b is also the same thing as b dot a. Again, the order doesn't matter. Here you can pause the presentation again and go to this flash uh, graphic, which will allow you to manipulate
a couple of vectors and see what the dot product uh, actually does. There is an interpretation of dot product that's usually fairly useful, and that is the dot product is often thought about as being the projection of one vector onto the other vector. And finally, we can talk about the vector or the cross product. And we call this A cross B, or we say A cross B. And notice now on the right-hand side of the equation, what we get is C, and C is a new vector. And that new vector has a magnitude of magnitude A times magnitude B times the sine of the angle between the two vectors. Now, the direction of vector C is determined by what we call the right-hand rule. And I would encourage you to go to the text and take a look at points of how one applies the right-hand rule. Um, we'll do much more of this in class um, to determine the direction of the new vector C. Just like the dot product, we can use components to give us A cross B directly. However, this formula is not near as simple as the one for the dot product, and it also involves the unit vectors I hat, J hat, and K hat. So you can read this for yourselves, and you can see that it's the, uh, the subtraction of various combinations of the products of the components. Finally, with respect to the vector product, it is important to remember that A cross B is not the same thing as B cross A. You can go to uh, this website uh, and you'll get, again, a flash player that will show you and, and allow you to interact with uh, tutors and see what the cross product actually looks like when you do various manipulations.